Welcome everybody to Radicalize Truth Survives episode 87. At RadPod, we are always looking for ways to help people counter disinformation. We're going to be introducing you to our friend Stephen Douglas of Decoding Trolls, who has created an entire methodology to counter what he calls disinfolklore. Have a listen. Stephen Douglas, we are so honored that you are with us today. This is very exciting for Rad Pod. I have been a fan of your work for some time, ever since I first read about your disinfolklore folklore journey in Byline Supplement. And for those who are not aware of how you came to do this work, can you please explain uh, your history on that bridge in Ukraine? Uh, I'm delighted to be here. It's very good to be here. Uh, I worked as a diplomat for the international community in eastern Ukraine for seven years and for four of those years from 2015 to 2018 I was working on a bridge in a place called Stanitsa Luhanska which is on a river over a river that divided Russia occupied Ukraine from government controlled Ukraine. And my job there was to help facilitate safe passage over this bridge, which was guarded on one end by Russian occupiers and on the other end by uh, Ukrainian defenders. And as soon as I had uh, arrived there, I got a feeling that there was something folklore about the whole uh, situation itself and also about the stories which I was trying to interpret in the information space of Russia occupied Ukraine. And there was something, some quality to everything about the environment. For instance, on one end of a bridge was uh, guarded by people who practiced precisely the same uh, techniques as at that time we were beginning to become used to on the internet. So there was a continuity between what was then known as Facebook trolling or um, funeral trolling uh, or concern trolling. In fact, one of the main Russian occupiers dealt with uh, part of his rhetorical um, arsenal was to concern troll about how we were being treated, for instance, by the Ukrainians. And I noticed this continuity between them. And of course, most uh, famous troll tales in our culture come from uh, the uh, Norwegian uh, story, which was written down about three, uh, uh, three billy goats gruff. And that was first written down around 1860. And through a variety of means, uh, including in um, Oakland and Southern, in California, the troll factory, the people who own the copyright to the actual troll dolls. And I suspect from there, it spilled into computer, early computer culture. And also, of course, through Tolkien and other uh, means, but also uh, through this idea of movement, which is contained in the world of troll, of, of trolling and goes back into early English. And in fact, as I've now discovered most Indo-European language, so this TR sound, which coincidentally is um, in Trump's name. And I actually found the first reference to Trump and trolling, uh, which is from around uh, 1989, where he's trolling for a buyer for his yacht wow. um and uh so this idea of trolling which is valid in american culture and american english for fishing where the hook is wandering around with the bait and it's used in american modern american language to talk about trolling for criminals wow which that's alien uh that no one understands what that means in the uk but they do understand what trolling in um, Tolkien and in folklore means. Yes. And, and through this uh, synthesis, uh, we got involved with this. Uh, I, I started looking at what is what is trolling. And 
uh, and it all arose really from that bridge and my immerse every day I used to have to deal with these bridge trolls and negotiate safe passage for these people over there and also I noticed in the information space in Russia occupied Ukraine uh, there was a vast array of different um, media techniques who were trolling moving emotions which is basically what I what I distilled it to the first stage and the first module in disinfolklore is this idea of emotion moving activity of body speech and mind and movement wow. is in TR it's in emotion it's uh moving obviously and uh activity is also in activity motion moving activity body speech and mind and that for me is what trolling is and it works on the interpersonal basis um we are trolling each other's emotions now speaking but it also works on a, on a massive on a geopolitical basis and i see a continuity between them all mainly because i was on this bridge uh, in this place in eastern ukraine before ukraine was famous wow. and i saw this it was the same thing so that you know i i, I the origin story is amazing and for our viewers you have uh, multiple sub stacks that you write decoding trolls and distant folklore power of mana and they all are connected one of the things i understand about your work is what you expose is that all of these techniques these narratives that were coming to you across the bridge are about coercive control and can you talk a bit about that yeah that's right and you know <laughs> troll the clue is in control so again it's going back to this this idea of movement uh which if we look in shakespeare's english troll the bowl past the bowl one of our speakers here has a has a bowl uh and this is the the idea of the pipe being passed around you troll the bowl um and so control and patrol we were on patrols um these aren't mere uh coincidences I realized and eventually after a lot of work uh, I basically started in earnest uh, in February 2020 looking into folklore really because all I knew about folklore was I recognized a family resemblance uh between what was going on at bridge and uh folklore but I didn't know much about it apart from you know what I remembered from from childhood and it opened up this whole universe including this idea of the TR sound which is obviously in trans uh, trans as well which the far right love to um to use and it um, I think it's probably the best um, example of its early use in an Indo-European language is in this this idea of rata, R-T-A, um, which means truth in Sanskrit um, and means what is. So this is uh, this is also the origin of the right, the writ, uh, right, writ. Uh, it's in authority. It's in uh, sovereignty. It's the R-N. T sound, um, security, um, integrity, territorial integrity, but and, and fertility. So it's this, it's this sound, and this is what, by accident or by design, Trump and various very uh, brilliant communicators have managed to um, uh, to use to uh, to try and work. They're working on a level below. Uh, language and and for me when I worked out when I was trying to work out what what are these what, how are these guys how are these people controlling others uh, I realized it, it, there, there's more to the accidental coincidence for instance between this uh, you know an art is what is and there's often a reversal of the R and the T and so in, in control uh, it, it's literally it says it is what it says in the tin it's sort of moving us together um and so what i um in terms of coercive control uh that is for me the 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 essence of what a lot of this um a lot of this stuff is about particularly russian uh communications and so i, I use it uh if i can see this energy in particular memes uh in linguistic or visual or aud auditory memes um, if I can see this, um, this what I call mana, this energy, of course, of control, then I know I'm probably dealing with a paleo conservative. I'm dealing with 
um, people who are either accidentally, maybe like Trump, or the people behind him who who maybe don't understand everything I'm talking about here, but they do understand it works. It's mechanical that they can uh, provoke, you know, the the wife beater uh, can provoke wow. certain reactions. Um, so that wow. that's where the course of control gets in. One of the things that I found fascinating about your work is that you realize uh, that you were in the middle of a genocide and you didn't know it when you were originally documenting as things were happening on that bridge. And can you explain how that has informed your work? Yeah, I mean, one of my key tenets on uh, at Decoding Trolls is uh, people, people think, um, including me, and I fall into it, think that disinformation happens to other people. And so they can enlighten other people about this or that troll, which is moving someone else's emotions and getting them to do something they wouldn't otherwise do. But what I realized, I was, um, I trained as an international lawyer um, at Cambridge University, and I stud I had studied the Holocaust in great detail, in the sense that, you know, I went to Auschwitz and Dachau, I read Primo Levi and, um, uh, um, and, and various other uh, books and about it about the holocaust and i was working inside what i now understand since the full-scale invasion of ukraine was what i call a stealth genocide so part of the theme which i noticed very early on in the information space that the russians created in russia occupied ukraine through uh, multiple television stations with a whole spectrum of production values from soviet to CNN-esque, uh, billions of different uh, websites, which we now, this is pre-Telegram, now we, we, we're kind of familiar with a, a bit well, of yes. Telegram. Yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed. And, and on the radio and uh, television, normal programs. And there were certain tropes, which I just understand, I, this is really weird what's going on, but I don't understand what they're doing. So there was always stories about Polish, 10,000 Polish mercenaries uh, collecting on one side of the bridge and my bosses would send me and my uh, colleagues to go and search out these 10,000 Polish mercenaries and of course knowing these places because we'd been there along the river we knew there wasn't 10,000 mercenaries uh, and so we'd go there and we'd find a few local villagers who were just minding their own business no 10,000 mercenaries and it was actually only after the full-scale invasion that I realized and we hear it again someone counted uh, Putin uh, made a speech the other day where he mentioned uh what which was his speech oh it's this kind of he did this really long boring two hour and ten minute speech uh his state of the union or some something like this and he mentioned poland 70 times and um what's really going on there is he's um he's provoking in the minds of the listeners this whole system of uh, a whole network of trolls and meanings which they've gotten from all of their school textbooks and this idea of polish mercenaries basically what they were doing there was they were uh they were trying to create and they successfully did that in the minds of ukrainians living in russia occupied ukraine this idea that they were other than the ukrainians across the river and the idea was to scare them so that these polish mercenaries are going to come and um affect your security and this was one of the main means through which uh, not just the Polish mercenaries, but or just this whole hyper normalized vocabulary. And by hyper normalized, what I mean is to you and me, when we hear Polish mercenaries, we think of Poland, Warsaw and mercenaries from maybe Dick Turpin or I don't know, you know, stuff we watched um, that film with the guy who's uh, I can't remember Johnny Depp, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean or something mercenaries. But in the if if you're in the mind, the Soviet mindset, who's been trained in that it's a hyper normalized meme. And what it basically means is everything bad in the world. They're not thinking about mercenaries as people who get paid for killing people. It's just a scary. It's a bogeyman bogey person. Wow. It, I, um, I just wanted yeah. to say this, there is a version of exactly this going on in America right now at scale, which is the border invasion. Yes. It's currently, Absolutely. there are there are battalions of Chinese, you know, military aged men coming across the border because Joe Biden has 
has you know left it left the bridge open right i mean to to me there wow. there is a there is a you know a, compl- a correlation at scale between what you are experiencing which is somebody making up a myth a, a folklore a meme if you will to me it's all an archetype these are all sort of the same idea right it's yes there is a there's a bridge on the other side of it are invaders and we are the we are the solution to it we are the wow. trolls we're the good trolls right wow the good the good you know trump is my troll is basically the you know there's a a version of that so i just wanted wow. i just wanted to say it, it feels very familiar all the things that you're saying so that's a great you. point jim and now putin absolutely. is their troll as well yes yeah, absolutely they've that, merged them yes indeed wow well, this is I yes think, go ahead Jeff. go ahead Steve. I, I think they um yeah, it's always involves borders. It's very easy um, when you've got bridge rivers. Um, and because I saw this family resemblance between what I witnessed there and was embedded in, and for instance, the Brexit referendum, where uh, the scepter of a million dark Syrians were coming. Wow. Uh, and with MAGA and this uh, border crisis and um, that, so I put a lot of thought into it, as many people have. And really what I believe what is going on is, and again, for many people, this is a mechanical process. They just realize they don't understand what's going on. But I, what I think is going on is, so we learn, we have this idea of the inner outer realm, which we we get from our first time when we're socializing. We get it from Disney, uh, where we're living in the inner realm. And all our friends are in the inner realm and then we get expelled you know we have a fight with our friend and we lose our best friend uh and we go into the outer realm and basically what this stuff about the borders and immigrants is uh is doing it, it it's mere words on a page about mexico and caravans and all of this but i believe what it's going on um psychologically is it's basically teaching us and this comes back to the idea of uh dis folklore Uh, because it's taught through stories we hear uh trump tells stories all the time he he uh projects he um he he imitates the sound of a missile launch code and he's putting us in this story and the story is really telling us to be afraid of uh the criminal uh the mexicans i'm not going to mention the word that he used when he was standing in in, yes. in, in his um, uh, when he launched his campaign, and all of this, as far as I can see now, goes back to this essential tripartite structure in Indo-European culture between sovereignty, security, and fertility. So the governance model, uh, which was used, uh, and this was discovered by a guy called Georges Dumizel um, in 1930s in Paris. He just had an epiphany. And he founded this discipline called comparative mythology, which I've learned a lot from, but I also use its techniques to parse dis- what I call disinfolklore and to assemble what I call counter disinfolklore to counter it. Yeah. Um, and so this inner outer realm division, I mean, it was so beautiful with um, the easy example, I, I uh, which I think is worth doing, which um, your viewers will probably be familiar with, is uh, we have a black American princess from California, privately educated. She's in a realm, LA. Uh, she's a she's a massive star. She moves to England where she falls in love with a prince who is obviously in a realm in England. However, the inner realm of the prince's life, the princess, uh, sees her as outer realm because she's self-made, she's confident, she's black, uh, she's from a different culture. And uh, through various means, uh, everyone in the inner realm uh, gets together to expel the black American princess to wow. the outer realm of uh, Beverly Hills, California. And the prince uh, is um, expelled too from the outer wow. realm of England. And w- why this is a particularly good example is the people in this, uh, this, p- this story uh, occupy uh, the roles in real life that they would have occupied and do in Disney. Um, 
and wow. um and and so when we see people like um i sense at the moment uh we, we get introduced to these characters these new characters all the time whether um it's the nicknames the monikers for them or uh, uh and and suddenly everyone gets uh, erupted but it's all about this inner outer realm uh, mm -hmm. which is obviously the immigrant stuff mm -hmm. Um, and it goes from those stories into our mind and we begin to think, I'm MAGA, they're not MAGA, they're the enemy. And we go back to your great idea, the, the witch switch, Heidi, where um, once you get, once you um, you have this structure, which we already have, and you, you, you can hang other people on it. Every now and again, you have to yes. resurrect the caravans, the immigrants. Yes. Um, and then there's the causal link. So Russia... Uh, as as we know, uh, and I was there in eastern Ukraine when it it started carpet bombing Syria, which creates these million migrants, and a million migrants are suddenly at this spot. I used to I was a diplomat in the Kos in Kosovo for a while, and I used to go to Greece quite a lot through North Macedonia, and suddenly in the autumn or the fall of 2015, a million migrants appear there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in uh, early 2016, the um, the Brexit campaign begins. Yes. And it's all about these pictures of black males, um, mainly dark males, 95% of them. And the implication is they're coming to take your sovereignty, your security, and the fertility of the inner realm of England. They're coming to adulterate your daughters or your sons. They're going to vote and they're going to take, take away your votes. Um, and the security, this is where the criminal bit. Uh, as, as we discussed prior to the show, I was a troll as a young man. And one of the things we attempted to do uh, as trolls in the Something Awful forums and then on the 4chan B boards was to create false realities to drag people into them, to mess with their neurochemicals, to trigger them if possible, to make them go a little bit loopy. Um, and I see this being done on a global scale and it's being done by companies that are making money doing this trolling. I mean, mm. we've identified numerous uh, companies. Um, why is there not, you know, in, in the UK, we see Cambridge Analytica behind Brexit, right? Um, in, in the United States, we see a company like Yonder behind Project Birmingham. Um, we, we see this trolling, and not just this trolling, but we also see money laundering. We see uh, espionage in the form of infiltration of governmental organizations. Um, why has the globe not come to terms with this? Why aren't there not just federal regulations in each country, but international treaties about this sort of abuse of data, online mistreatment of the citizens of these countries? I mean, it's making the world go crazy. These malign activities collectively is resulting in a world that's just going mad, in my opinion. Well, um, I, one of the things I try to do, one of the modules underpinning Distant Folklore, which comes from early on in my research, is uh, what I call the Code of Positive Trolls. And I believed in it so much, I registered the trademark in the European Union in February 2020 uh, for positive trolling and positive trolls. And basically, part I think the answer to partly the answer to your question is there there is no most people not only do not have an evaluative an evaluative framework with which to proof uh, communications of any kind because this yeah. is why I see it it's between uh, you and your cat you and advertisers you and your church. Um, you and the president of the United States or advertisers. So, so I, I see this continuity between, it, it's about all communications. Um, and if you have an evaluative framework, uh, you can work out, well, is this positive, negative, or neutral trolling, um, basically. And that I've, I've injected this module into uh, disinfolklore. And this is really what distinguishes disinfolklore from counter disinfolklore. So for instance, disinfolklore is trying to persuade you to do stuff which is contrary to the six elements in the code of positive trolls. And the second element is ethical discipline. So it, it's trying to persuade you to advocate uh, to breach the refugee convention. So for me, everything 
begins after the, the, the legal architecture which was established after the Second World War, human rights protected as a matter of law, yes. uh, universally applicable, no one country has the right to transgress them, the Refugee Convention, the laws of war, uh, international criminal law, uh, and the project of the paleo-conservative people like the, the Mercers and President Putin and the US oligarchs, the French oligarchs, the English oligarchs, uh, they are all uh, united against the post-World War II legal order. And so if you have this in mind, then any troll, whether it's uh, in a newspaper or um, or someone your friend saying, oh, I just met a refugee and, you know, they they have a car and they've just, you know, married someone and, you know, all of this, these distant folklore stories. If you've got a mechanism to cut through it in real time, then it can help us avoid getting, as we all do, um, worried and so worried about something, so fearful that we end up breaching our own ethical codes. Um, so the Code of Positive Trolls has, uh, so if in any communication uh, briefs, uh, breaches any one of these, um, uh, generosity, so it's not very generous to, to want to drown immigrants in uh, the Rio Grande because they're just trying to get to America. Um, ethical discipline, it's just really improper from every ethical code we have to breach the Refugee Convention. It, we, we all understand what happened with the Holocaust and why people have a right to seek asylum um, when they have a well-founded fear of persecution. Um, patience, uh, so, we, we, you know, the, the, the energy, if the energy in this communication is manifesting in patience, uh, joyous perseverance, um, uh, focus and insight or wisdom, but it's mainly the mainly this ethical discipline thing. I think is the most useful element in it because a lot of the stuff um, and and so if we have this in mind, then we will know when we're being goaded into doing bad things. And I think that because what I'm trying to do, my my uh, my my ambition, my market is, I want to provide easily um, understood analytical tools that we can use in real time, I, I, yeah. you know, that we don't need to go to a, um, a journalist website to work out this um, thing. What I want to try and do is find something, uh, and I believe I have discovered it, and that's what, I, what motivates all of my work, is a method that we can integrate into our thinking. And it, it, if we can keep it in mind, that's where the focus bit, and it's very hard, I, I, I transgress this all the time, then we have these particular uh, uh, ways of proofing communications and but mainly to answer your question I think it's about most people most people including experts in misinformation and disinformation don't even understand there is a lack of an evaluative framework so this problem with mis and disinformation you know the same uh, informational unit can be from you your complete uh, I'm 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 trying to trick you, so it's disinformation. But then you you're, you're trying to trick her, so it's become misinformation. But it's the same informational unit, and so yeah. we need an evaluative framework that we go underneath and go, okay, you're telling it. Uh, so yeah, so that's partly the reason. And as as I understand it, uh, without being a modest, um, I don't. I I I'm not always hunting for it. I haven't come across anyone else who's come up with, an, with who's who's realized the lack of a, an evaluative framework and who's come up with one that we can use on 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 the fly um and it should work for advertisers whether your your pastor is telling you to do something you shouldn't be doing or um and and i try and keep it to the sense that we we have a consensus after the world world war ii which is this legal architecture that many of it, I'm only aware of it because I studied international, I studied law, but I, but, but it's something we can all agree on, hopefully. And most of the rights project and the extreme left project is to get rid of this constraint on their power, uh, these supranational uh, laws, international law, international human rights law. They want workers not to have rights, you know? Uh, so that's, I think what joins it. And I, I got it actually from, an essay that Pat Buchanan wrote uh, in uh, which is wild late, the original uh, paleo yeah. yes exactly the, the, the original paleo he yeah, figured he it out December uh, 2013 and 
uh, it's called Putin's paleo conservative moment in which I, I saw the puppet strings and because he basically says in the essay, he says, um, the 21st century won't be uh, a, a vertical struggle between the, you know, uh, Islam and Christianity or between communism and capitalism. It will actually be uh, a civil war, a struggle in each of our countries between the transnational, again, this word TR, the trans, the transnational cosmopolitan elites and the traditional, again, tra, uh, conservatives and the globalists. Um, yeah. Globalists. globalists. Yeah. Yeah. That, it exactly. turned all of that turned into just globalist. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. I wanted to to just bring it back real quick, if I could, to the inner realm and the outer realm, um, because to to me that uh, what what you're doing is I think brilliant because it gives a narrative way, a, a non emotional way, to look at this um to look at psychological um uh impact right so an inner realm and an outer realm in psychology in you know and studying cults as i have a lot is the same thing as an in group and an out group right it is it's how you how you separate people psychologically from one another and it just strikes me that that what you're doing is is building a non a a non-emotional um you know um rational sort of framework around something that's very difficult to penetrate because it's it fucks with your mind pardon my french yes um just by looking at it right yes just yes. by being involved in it it it's confusing by definition I, w I just wanted to drop one line about sort of my my little trick for avoiding getting uh messed up on the internet is when they're flooding the zone with shit look at the people holding the fire hose not what's coming out of it mm -hmm. right like back back away from it don't put your face right where the 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 shit is coming out but try and step back and and look at who the players are um you know but i think what you're doing is creating a far uh more intricate and interesting and sort of you know potentially provable uh framework for for the same thing so i just wanted to to, I, I to bring that up and see if that, that makes sense i have a tool for that which is a, a core module um uh and heidi mentioned power of mana which is one of my publications, powerofmana.net. Um, so when you're trying to, when you look at, when you're looking at the shit, uh, as you so um, eloquently put it, um, <laughs> we want to look for the energy. What's the energy in this? And um, what I use the word mana, which if you look in the dictionary is, is, is energy. And the mana of disinfolklore is uh, unethical and unethically disciplined, mm -hmm. but it's usually... Uh, if it's Russian disinfolklore, and this comes back to your question, it, it's coercive control. So yeah. it's a manifesting this idea of uh, of um, of coercive control, of ransom. This idea of ransom. Um, everything is ransom. Everything is held to ransom. If you if you don't do this, then we will do that. Yes. And that structure is in all of it. The threat. Uh, again, the, the TR thing in there. And so what I look for is look for the mana in the meme. So it'll always be there. And um, if you uh, detect, if you're looking for the mana, again, it's a bit like the code of positive trolls. Most people don't know there's an absence in, in this, that, but there is an energy inside every meme, whether it's uh, a book, a whole book, or a picture, or a sound, or your cat meowing at you because it wants food. There's an energy in there. Where, which is affecting your intentions, wow. your mana, your energy. Yeah. Wow. And so I try to see how is this this all these um the output from the uh, from from the fire hose, how is it um, what's the energy in there and how is it affecting my energy, my intention? Did I start reading this article thinking, I've got to do everything I can to help Ukraine uh, resist uh, genocide? Um, but then by the end of the article, I'm thinking, oh, my God, 
uh, Ukrainians, I should be paying my money to Navalny or to someone else. Um, it's it's changed my intention, it's changed my manner, and that's the interaction between this uh, these this output. And once you see that, then you can trace it back. Say, like in the case of MAGA or Brexit or what I call Trump Brexitism or Russism, uh, which are my main focuses. Uh, you can generally trace it back to it, 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 to them. And so, um, yeah, that's my tool to try and help wow. with, with the task you put out. I, I just, I'm, I, I had that experience last night. All of a sudden I was like, why am I reading this article? And I traced it back and I'm like, oh, I see what's happening here. There I was doom scrolling and I landed here. And, and okay, I've got like four very important things before we let you go. And I know the guys have probably a couple more questions, but you talked, you talked about the theatricalness of a bad fairy tale. And one of the things about Disney folklore that I find very important that I want to make people aware of is that through P.T. Barnum's spectacle, what they're doing and using media is to turn us into watchers and not participants. And that, I think, is the biggest scary uh, realization for me. And one of the fails is that what Trump does so well and 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 the Russians, the Putinists, is that they're turning all of this into spectacle. We are participants and we are now taking away our power being active as uh, people who, in our case, are very pro-democracy. If we're raging against the Twitter machine and we're in this cycle, uh, it, it it is disabling many people, I think, from being active in in participating. I mean, it's both. It's like, yes, we have to be on the front lines in the information war, but also how do we warn people about just being spectators? I guess that's my question. Well, a public participation and decision-making is a human right. It's the, it's the fundamental human right upon which our entire democratic edifice rests. And again, most people don't think public participation, decision-making is a human right universally applicable okay. and it helps i think just to drive that home i only know it because i'm a lawyer and i worked in kosovo on trying to empower um people to understand what their what their rights were and the authoritarianism it just tries to tries to um get rid of that uh, obviously you don't want to participate so i think that that helps to to remind uh people that their participation is and also just exposing this 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 trick, which I think we all probably notice, how uh, Trump plays the villain, plays the cartoon villain, and then we have the same thing yes. with this guy in England called Farage and these people. Um, so you begin to see the pattern, and you begin to think. And obviously Berlusconi was our first training, but that was kind of a an outlier. Right. Um, but you see this pattern. You see something's going on that is similar. There's a family resemblance. That great. Um, uh, indistinct uh, concept just there's something about it that's similar and as you've just put it I think it is this thing it's turning us into spectators but it's trying to take away our our right to public participation so that would be my short answer to that I, I love that and I'm going to quote you if you've ever wondered what you'd be doing before the second world war while well, you're doing it now and so many of us are doing our best to engage in mimetic battles and we here are engaging in mimetic battles but I think this is what you're doing in world war if this were the run-up to world war ii this is exactly what you're doing right now and I think that um Okay, I got like three more things, but I know probably High Fire Jim has something else and lightning round. How do we get the world to get off their butts and start treating this stuff as seriously as they should? I'm well, I'm yeah, I work full time on it. I think all of us are trying our best. I mean, it goes back to this. Let's go back to where the beginning about the stealth genocide idea. So it's this idea that. I was inside what I understand now was a stealth genocide. What they were, Russia was preparing the ground to um, teach and inculcate in Ukrainians in in Russia occupied Ukraine that they weren't Ukrainian and preparing them to kill uh, their fellow Ukrainians. And for the Russian, it doesn't matter who's killing whom. The point is to get rid of Ukrainians. And if I, as an internationally trained lawyer from the esteemed Cambridge University who had studied the Holocaust and stuff was inside this world for seven years and I didn't realize it. 
yeah. uh, then I, I think that's a good little parable to say we um, we've just got to keep uh, what I call our incoming troll radar. So whether it's on, as you were saying, Heidi, you're just reading an article and you, you're you're watching yourself and you think, oh my God, I'm I'm I feel I'm becoming depressed as I'm reading this article. Absolutely. Um, or 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 just on a meta way, we 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 think about the whole world. Everything's going to crap and everything is, you know, about to die. And someone is, and that's as a result of someone telling us something that we um we realize that um we may be the subject or the object, <laughs> I never know which, of of disin folklore at that moment. Yeah. And it, it could be manipulating us. And and so it's that idea, I think, of not being so proud or so expert. Oh, I'll never fall for that. Because um, yeah. whenever I have that feeling, I try to remember, oh, my God, I was inside a genocide seven years and, it, and, and I didn't even notice it um, because it's this idea, you know, which I which I which I think Heidi seen, which I write about a lot, which is it's 1942. Uh, you see the trains going by the bottom of your garden on the way to Auschwitz, would you realize that that you're witnessing a genocide? No, you wouldn't, because genocides and, and these bad things and, and, and um, are made up of lots of dual use moments. So it could be innocuous, it could be fine, but as part of a system, it, it's bad. So I think each of us has something to teach ourselves and to remember for ourselves and, and to just keep uh, plugging away. Um, oh truth a humi humility and this is so important jim is always saying stop focusing on the spectacle of trump that is like one of the things he's always pointing out and you have a great line here you can turn politics into spectacle so all of people's energy is directed at trying to figure out what's going on rather than participating and that is one of the uh, decoding trolls russian propaganda techniques and i just wanted to spell that out because we as Jim was saying, we have to look at who's holding the hose uh, rather than just, uh, you know, falling into despair or down rabbit holes when we're dealing with this onslaught. And right now in America, Joe Biden is fighting way too many fronts. Um, and I, I want to be able to wrap this up with some of your very key points. Um, when you were studying what Pat Buchanan was saying about Putin's paleoconservative moment, what you really realized about all the people that we focus on, me and my American Monster series, Jim and all of his work, uh, Hi-Fi and his work, is what these people don't want. Uh, they don't want human rights or anything to get in the way of their power. And that's really the bottom line, I think, that informs so much of our work and your work. And you used an amazing word called masculine, masculinists. Uh, these are the people who invaded the Capitol. Can you speak on that a bit so we can sort of sound the alarm to people that they're being manipulated to be the goons who would have been the goons uh, in World War II and they don't even know it. And I don't think they know it. But masculine. Yeah, another, another of the, the manner, the energy in Russian and all of this paleo male, paleo conservative, uh, disin folklore is a misogyny so i call uh the ccp iran the islamic republic of iran as distinct from the ancient culture of iran and maga and brexit these are the axis uh, axis of misogyny um and if we see that energy in these memes and again it goes back to uh the international conventions on banning discrimination on the grounds of sex um and banning discrimination on the, on the grounds of um, gender um, uh, uh, identity or sexual preference or politics. The, this is international law, um, certainly in terms of sex and political beliefs. And what they're trying to do is um, discriminate against, for instance, half our population, which are women, and to create this, I mean, um, this what they call the handmaid, handmaid's uh, tale uh situation and so that um that for me again is if you pick up that energy in any meme then you probably know you're being trolled so even if you might feel whatever reason um because you know some uh someone uh, yeah for whatever reason sympathetic or empathetic to the story if you're picking up this manner of um of misogyny from it it's part of it and what i noticed with the 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 pat buchanan thing is because the question i was wondering was 
what ties all of these uh, oligarchs together? Uh, because it's more than compromat, meaning, you know, they've got pictures in the shower and something. But the compromat, and this is the brilliant uh, idea I got from Peter Dukes from Byline Times, where actually the compromat, the compromise, what your vulnerability is, you want uh, um, power. Uh, you 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 want your workers no restrictions on your workers uh you want to build a handmaid's tail yeah. place you're um, a sociopath and yeah <laughs> well it, I mean, it could be short, that right? I, ideologically they and because of that they're susceptible to manipulation and intra manipulation by 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 themselves and yes. that's what's powering it so if we see it as they are ideologically um at one with each other and it, so it's not just um, an accidental uh, coalition. Um, and if we can understand that, and that's what I saw with Pat Buchanan in Putin's paleoconservative moment, uh, I sensed, I could see the puppet strings. And now since then, I looked into it a lot. There's a whole body of academic scholarship, which has, <laughs> lo and behold, concluded there is no such cultural war. There is nothing like this. He's, he's, he's um, pronouncing it into existence. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Oh my God. Uh, what, hey, go ahead, I just want to briefly, um, people widely misunderstand the power of narrative of story, mm -hmm. right? Story is sort of the fundamental construct that we learn from, right? Like think of the first story that, you know, the Neanderthal learned is there's a saber tooth tiger behind the, the rock. Right. I'm telling you a story about a tiger behind the rock to save your fucking life. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so the, it's the way we take information in, process it and and bank it into our own sort of behavior. And people do not understand well enough that stories are weaponized. Right. Yes. Stories create reality for people. And. And the and I'll get to the questioner here is <laughs> the Russians are experts at narrative warfare, right? If you all the way back to the protocols of the elders of Zion, mm -hmm. which is a story that they created about a cabal of Jews who eat, you know, kids and pedophiles and all the same shit that we're seeing right now. It was a story that was, you know, blood libel has been around for a thousand years, but it was recapitulated by the Russians and the protocols. And it's a story that's being repeated right now. Um, and I think that, that that entire sort of um, constellation of, of topics is just under under you know under understood <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that's the population and realizing. i wanted to thank yes. you for for you know putting some meat on those bones because it's very very important well what's so great thank about you. his work and what you just said is that he shows how these narratives are part of authoritarian tactics but he does it in a way where he uses those fairy tales that actually explain it uh through these, through the, the 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 simple now I'm using simpleness of the narrative. Um, I know we only have a couple more minutes, and I just want to say, uh, which switch was a great Peter Jukes uh, title uh, on an right. article that I knew I wanted to write because they're continually moving the target, and that is, and 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 we're gonna I'm gonna have you end on that line because you gave me a great quote, so I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment. But from the what you call the New York Times. Uh, to the tankies, I want you to explain why all of this is so dangerous. All of these extremes on narrative, on the narrative warfare front are so dangerous. And I think people get confused. They think in terms of ideology, oh, it's the right. No, it's, it's anybody that is um, manipulating truth for authoritarian purposes. Yeah, I think, well, if they're um, these particular, uh, so there's lots of different witch switches, but the immigrant, the border uh, one, I think is is the fundamental, as long with uh, trans transgressors. So the word trans, meaning transsexuals, um, 
actually is abbreviated into trans. And so what certain uh, personality inventories uh, who are highly neurotic and low conscientious here, 30% of our population, the high right right wing authoritarian followers, what they hear when the word they hear the word trans is just transgressor. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, one relatively small category of people become the whole focus for this. And they're wow. a mere vehicle or tool to bang home this idea that these these people are transgressors. And of course, all, all of this is about inner outer realm. You're transgressing the rules of the inner realm. So you go to the outer realm. And so every now and again, the immigrant and the borders have to be um, uh, have to come up. But in between that, we can go for Taylor Swift and whoever, right. you know, whoever of the, of the, of the day uh like and when i saw desantis going for disney i was like and the brexiteers also go for disney i'm like oh my god you really don't understand what you're doing here because disney controls our understanding of the inner outer realm through its story form and you think this is just a normal enemy um that you're picking up like a, a corporation or something like that and lo and behold, we see what happens to DeSantis um, yes. because these um, these uh, so th so that's that's why I think it's so important <laughs> is this othering is well, 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 why it's so important. We see the Congress is a mess and mm -hmm. uh, the Ukraine, a, you know, it's just going around in circles. No one trusts America now. And I say this as American, even though I don't sound like it. Um, uh, no one trusts America now uh, be with NATO because of mm -hmm. one little story that Trump told. I was in a room and I was speaking to the leader of a great American country. And he said to me, "You are you saying if we don't pay our 2%, we're not going to protect you? Yeah. yeah. And I and I said to him, if I don't protect you, if if you don't pay your 2%, two, two I'm going to say they can do whatever the hell they want with you. Again, this misogyny thing. So yeah. they, they, they picture Ukraine as a woman. Putin compares Ukraine as a woman who can they can do terrible things to uh, as a corpse and put and Trump in his little story, his little disinfocal story within 15 seconds, he changed the entire uh, security architecture in Europe. And finally, France, for instance, as the only nuclear power in the European Union realizes, oh, my God, we cannot depend on America. So so how do we convince people we see that these these tiny, these little stories, these disinfolklore, um, these lies, it's unethically disciplined because that conversation never happened yeah. um, at, at all. And it's 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 partly making a mess of everything we we value and affecting our our daily lives and our minds, most importantly. Yes. So it it, uh, it behoves us, if I can introduce that great word, it behoves us to try <laughs> and understand what's going on and try and combat it. Um, oh my gosh, I actually really love your American accent that you did when you were impersonating Trump. My yeah. last thing for you, and it's I think it's so important um, because people, I want to keep them out of despair and into action. Um, in my Witch Switch article, you noted that uh, the Witch Switch is a method used by the extremists, and in this case, the right to smuggle in their bad policies and cover up their incompetent governing with chaos. And then you said that the drivers of this kind of trolling learned early in life they're congenitally, congenitally incompetent, but that by creating chaos, they can cover this up and compensate for it by othering. Trump, Putin, all of them are incompetent, really. They sell fear so they can act as saviors, but what they are is incompetent. And I really love that because there is so much empirical evidence particularly in Trump's case, of a lifetime of incompetence, bankruptcy, lies, failures, whatever. And uh, and yet he masks himself as a savior and just one great distant folklore line about that. You've just made me think of a new meaning of the witch switch. So the fundamental story across Indo-European culture is what they call the Trito myth. And because it's in every... Um, and that's Bruce Lincoln, um, a theologian from Chicago, who who man who genius who worked this out. Uh, and because it's in every Indo-European culture, uh, basically Trito is a farmer, and um, uh, the dragon comes or the snake comes, and um, starts uh, takes his cattle, 
and he is a male, takes his cattle. And um, in some tellings, the uh, Trito gets the um, uh, sky father, uh, Deus Pater, Jupiter, Jupiter, Deus Pater, uh, to intercede on his behalf. Or in other cases, he just gets the cat cattle back. And then after that, he sacrifices uh, in order as a contract uh, with God. And the point being, Trito always wins in every culture, whether it's Iranian, Irish, um, uh, uh, Greek, uh, Indian, um, Trito always wins. And what uh, Trump and co are trying to do is put themselves in Trito's position. So they're trying to switch themselves. They are the dragon. They are the snake come to wow. take Trito's cattle. Um, and in fact, by turning us into the, turning it into a spectacle, they are, you know, that we, we've all noticed this flicker between victim and perpetrator. It's like when Putin, it's even in every sentence, they're trying to, between David and Goliath. Um, so we know the mouse always wins. We always get this happy ending. And so that in terms of inspiring people, um, uh, the mouse always wins and Trito always wins, uh, but we just have to be careful who we see as Trito. Obviously, MAGA see Trump as Trito, as ridiculous as it is, uh, and us as the dragons, but we just have to kind of switch them back and we need Disney for that. Um, I'm sad <laughs> to say, as someone who, 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 you know, I've read Horkheimer and Adorno's uh, The Culture Industry and all of that stuff. So I'm a great critic of, of all of that, but at the same, but at the end, but at the end of the day, for instance, Disney now, and this is why DeSantis drives him nuts, is promoting the post-World War II uh, architecture, no discrimination, and maybe you know it needs a market for everyone, and it's got people of different colors and different yes. ethnicities and different cultures, different accents, and um, so we can work with these happy endings and um, and and make sure that we understand who Trito is and who the snake is. And, and obviously awareness is wait, growing. Wait, 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 where's the cat? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Bring, bring the cat. Wait. The cat gets in the picture. Who do we have? Ukrainian cat, by the way. Ukrainian cat. Oh. Um, 